Hello. It's so good to see each of you. Let's dive in. Type safety is important because it means your software will actually do what you want it to do. For example, if you have a function that is going to do some math, you should give it a number. If you give it a string, it will probably work because it's JavaScript, but ignore that because it won't always work. JavaScript gives you some level of type safety, but you have to run the program to see if it's correct or not. This is a colossal waste of time. There is a better way. The ideal scenario is that all type errors will be caught at build time, ensuring no type-related bugs reach production. And this is the entire motivation behind TypeScript. <laughs> TypeScript is like running through a maze with your eyes open. But JavaScript is like running through a maze with your eyes closed. You have to actually bang into a wall to see if it's there or not. And we don't like banging into walls, so we use TypeScript. As a co-founder of the startup Flight Control, where we make it easy to deploy apps to AWS, I care a tremendous amount about building fast, efficiently, and bug-free. And TypeScript is one of the biggest levers you have to accomplish this. Accomplish this. Thankfully, setting up TypeScript with Next.js is a breeze. All you have to do is rename a file to .ts or .tsx if it is using JSX. Then run next dev, and it will automatically install all the dependencies and the necessary configuration files for you. It's really that easy to start using TypeScript with Next.js. It's really incredible. Here's the tsconfig.json that is generated for you. This is how you configure TypeScript. I highly recommend setting strict to true, if not right away, after you have become a bit more familiar with TypeScript. Strict true will give you the most guarantees of type safety. In my opinion, TypeScript shines the brightest when working with data, because data usually gets very complex and hard to keep track of in your head. Let's look at how TypeScript can help us when using data in Next.js. The first and most basic way to render data in Next.js is using git server-side props. So let's add that function. And we're not sure quite what to do here. We're not getting any type of autocomplete, nothing to help us, except for the docs, but who wants to go there? So thankfully, Next.js provides a type, get server-side props, so we can import and use that. And now we get a type error. String is not assignable to, it's saying we need to return an object. So let's return an object. And now TypeScript is happy. Well, so we need some data. I have a JSON file uh, with some deployments in it. And so I will just import and require this. Return deployments from get server-side props. And then access that in the page as a React prop. Let's render that on the page. Boom! Yes, it worked. It didn't fail. All right. We still have a big problem here. Deployments is type any. And so we can break the app, but TypeScript doesn't tell us anything. So let's go ahead and define a type that has the, the information about this data. So it has an ID field, a date field, and a commit field. 
We'll use that type inside get server side props. And then we'll add that type to our page. Yay, we get a type error now. We found the bug. So this is awesome, except actually it's not. Because if we remove deployments from up here, we don't get any type error. But clearly, the app is broken. So what we need is a way to automatically link the types from get server side props to the page. Good news! We can do that with some advanced TypeScript. Even better news! Next.js did all the hard work for us. We import the infer get server side props type and use it like this. So now we get the, the page props type. And wait a minute. This is not it's any type any and deployments is not showing up here. Oh yeah, we need to define the type up here with get server side props. It's just something you have to do with this thing. Once we define the type here, now page props is correct and we can use that page props on our component. And now if we remove deployments like we did before, we get a type error. Yes, I'm making progress. This, my friends, is the secret to a long, happy marriage with TypeScript. We have TypeScript working with our JSON data file, but for a real app, we need a database. Does that mean I have to manually write all the types for all the tables and fields in my database? Shit. Maybe TypeScript isn't such a good idea after all. Wait, there's a solution. Actually, there's two of them. Prisma is a TypeScript ORM that you can connect to an existing database. And if you want, it can also manage the migrations for you. This is really sweet. EdgeDB, on the other hand, is a new graph style database built on Postgres. Like Prisma, it gives you a type safe database client for your code. In many ways, EdgeDB has better performance and ergonomics than Prisma, but is tied to a specific database. So for today's demonstration, we will be using Prisma. Let's throw away that JSON crap and we will set up Prisma. Here's the Prisma schema file that has the, the table and field for our database. We'll use this by running Prisma generate on the CLI, and it will generate a bunch of TypeScript for us. Let's go look at what that looks like. Holy cow, this is bananas. You know? I really like bananas. I eat like three bananas every day. And I, I really recommend them because they're really easy to use and have minimal trade-offs. Thankfully, you don't have to deal with bananas to use Prisma. So we'll use Prisma to fetch deployments from our database. Now we have the type coming from the database, so we can eliminate our, our custom type. And now that type automatically flows through to our component. So if we update the database to add or remove a field or table, we will uh, get that will show up in the component. And so if there's any, any issues there, TypeScript will warn us. Let's go over to this new page here. What? Flash must have moved the page without updating all the links. Have you ever had broken links in your Next.js application because of shit like this? What did you do about it? 
How did you keep it from happening? Thankfully, the Blitz.js community had this frustration and came up with a really elegant solution. Install Blitz and Blitz.js next. Wrap your next config with Blitz. Restart the next server. And now we can import the routes object that was generated for us from Blitz and use that in place of the string for links. This routes object has all the pages in your application on it. And now that we change that, the link works. This is really awesome because it prevents broken links, it gives you type safety for your routes, and it allows you to move pages to different routes without updating any links. And it does that because the routes object uses the name of the component in the page, not the URL. Anyone want to raise? Add this one thing to your app when you go back to work. We're now good on the front end side of things. We can read and render data. But for the app to be useful, we need to let users write to the database. Here we have a form that's ready to go, uh, but we need to hook it up to an API. Thankfully, Next.js makes it easy to add an API endpoint by creating a new file in the API directory. So let's do that. We'll export a default function that takes request and response. And again, no autocomplete, but thankfully, Next.js provides types that we can import, next API request, next API response. Now we get autocomplete, and we can get the data out of our request, process it, and then return a result. Now we add the fetch function on the client, get the form data. Now we're in business. Yeah. Except I feel like there's a bug here. Anyone see the bug? We should have authentication, but uh, ignore that. TypeScript is amazing at helping us with this type of problem, which he was good at spotting. So we will export this input type from the server. And once we export it, we can import it in the client. We'll define a new variable to use that type. We'll move the, the data down from JSON stringify up to the variable. And boom, we have a type error, exactly what we wanted. And we have an extra data key in there that should not be there. So removing that will make it work. So now I've added the, uh, the return type uh, to the client. Um, and I did the same thing for exporting the, import, the input type. I can export the, the return type. So let's in inspect this. Oh, for crying out loud, not another type error. Object is possibly undefined. Well, wait, there's just one little trick you can do by adding an exclamation point after this type error, and it goes away. No, you can't do that. The bug is still there. You should almost never use an exclamation point or as any to fix a type problem 
because it just hides a possible bug. However, if you are new to TypeScript, you can use as any. But just know that it doesn't give you type safety. Yesterday, as I was preparing for this talk, I got a message from a customer about a bug in production. Guess what? It was caused by an as any in my code. So I fixed that and went on, went on with my day. I got to the after party, and I was having the time of my life. And I got another notification about another bug in production. Another as any bug. <laughs> Two of them on the same day as I was working on this talk. So that's why we want to stay away from as any. There are a few different ways to fix this maybe undefined error. If the error is expected, then use if else to branch your logic and handle it accordingly. If it's an unexpected error, like maybe a ghost or something, then use the assert function. This will ensure that you get a helpful type error or a helpful error uh, in production that will uh, help you track down the problem. What is assert? Assert is a function that will throw an error if the condition is false. Here, the top if statement does the same thing as the bottom assert call. In TypeScript, you usually have a lot of checks like this. And so assert is really nice. Assert is not built into JavaScript like some other languages. So you have to write it yourself. Here is how you do it. The magic is this assert keyword, which tells TypeScript that it asserts the condition that you pass to it. Assert is one of the most important tools to have in your tool belt. You should be using it often. Back to the API handler. We have all the types defined. But to be production quality, something very important is missing. And as I said earlier, ignore authentication. There's something else. Anyone know what's wrong? That guy's smart. He's just raising his hand every time. Or he's done this before. So it's, it's related to that. So is the type enforced? on the input, what happens if, when it runs, number of stars input is actually a string or a date or something crazy like an octopus? We need runtime validation. Both of these are super important because TypeScript does not do runtime validation. You have to handle it yourself. To be fully production ready, we need all of these runtime checks. Now, imagine if you had 10 input fields. You'd have to define all the types and all of the runtime validation checks for each one. That's crazy. Ain't nobody got time for that. Good news! There's an awesome library called Zod. Zod is an input uh, schema definition and validation library. It allows you to define the type and the runtime validation all with the same line of code. It lets you go from what's on top to what's on bottom. For only one field, it's not a huge difference. But as you add more and more fields and more complex validation requirements, Zod will save you a ton of work. Use Zod every time you are accepting user input or third-party data. This means every API route and even things like webhooks. Here's a very cool tool that will allow you to paste in JSON and it will automatically convert that into a Zod schema for you. So this is great for webhook, you know, payload from the Stripe docs or whatever. Just paste it in there, and you'll get a Zod schema. There's one more Zod trick 
that might blow your mind if you've never seen this before. What's better than just validating input on a server? Client-side validation. But shoot, does that mean I have to rewrite all my validations again? Nah, that'd be too hard. Watch this. So we'll take our Zod uh, schemas from the API file and move it to a third file that can be imported in both the client and the server. We'll just call it validations. Update our imports. And now we can import that schema and pass it to my form component. And now we get type safety on the client. So not only do we now have full stack type safety on both the client and the server, and we get uh, both validation on client and server, it's all done with just one line of code using it both places. This is the dream. Now let's talk about the different types of client-server data transfer. We have get server side props, which is easy to infer types, but it's only for data reads. We have REST, but you have to manually write the types or use something like Open API code generation toolchain, which that sounds like a mess to set up, right? We have GraphQL, however, it also requires a code generation tool chain like REST, so it's actually not any better than REST at, at types. It seems we don't have really any good solution for full stack type safety, but what other choice do we have? What if there was a way to import a server function into your React component. Because when you do that, you get full type safety without a code generation process. This happens to align very well with another style of API called RPC, which stands for Remote Procedure Call. Essentially, it's calling a function on another machine. Send some input, get some output. We could use React Query to handle loading states and caching. That would be amazing. But two things would have to happen. The server function would have to be automatically exposed as an API endpoint somehow. Secondly, the server, the import of that server function would have to be changed for importing a fetch function that would call that API endpoint. Guess what? It actually exists. It's called Blitz RPC, and this is exactly how it works. It's been around for two years, and is used in production by thousands of companies of all sizes, including our first speaker, Kitsa. If you heard about it before, you probably weren't super jazzed about it because it was a monolithic framework. But this year, Blitz pivoted, and now all its components are standalone and can be used with any Next.js application. Let's look at this again. This is literally all the code you need for client-server data communication. No complex HTTP stuff, no REST, no GraphQL, no serialization, deserialization. It works because the API endpoint is, and the API fetch function are swapped out at build time. So there is an API at runtime, it's just compiled for you. And this massively improves the speed at which you can build applications. It's an amazing way to connect your front end to your back end without like, going through the whole effort of setting up a, a full API, which you still might want to do at some point. Um, but like I said, we have large apps running this in production for their only uh, API. 
So now we have this full spectrum of client-server data transfer options, with Blitz RPC giving you the best full-stack type safety with the least amount of work. Here's a summary of the points I've touched on today. Here's some awesome resources for your TypeScript journey. Use the QR code to download my slides and access these links. The TypeScript Playground is super awesome for just in your browser playing with types, um, and you can share code. So if you have a TypeScript problem, put it in a playground, tweet it out, and be like, hey, can someone help me? And usually someone will help you. TypeScript, people are like that. Uh, there's a course, there's a React TypeScript cheat sheet, which is, is really handy for React. You're like, this, all this, I got this ref garbage, and this types are like driving me nuts. The, t the cheat sheet will help you some, but sometimes you still end up scratching your head with refs. But anyways, I guess use Svelte or something. Um, the, and then the last two are just like some really hardcore articles. Like if you really want to learn how to think in TypeScript and know how to program in TypeScript, it's a really great re resource. As we come to the close of this session, I want to boost your confidence in TypeScript. I want you to be fearless in approaching any TypeScript problem. You are smart. You can figure it out. With a moderate amount of effort, you can become better at TypeScript than many of your peers. Thank you, and good luck.